we're going to make a decision. This council has put a lot of effort and maybe contrary to what Frank says, we may have a little bit of talent on this occasion. We're studying this thing from all different avenues, all different angles. We hear loud and clear safety. We hear it. I believe that we're getting closer and closer to an answer that I don't think the township is going to like. I don't think our citizens of Cashville City will like. We're probably going to come up with a pretty good plan if nobody likes what we finally determine. We have a couple of issues here in safety. I cannot emphasize enough how much this council has considered safety. We need to do two things and then we're going to come to a conclusion. One of those things is we're going to need a professional study of the lay of the land that Timber Run lies on. There's a rise and there is limited visibility there. We're going to request an engineering firm to come in and analyze that visibility situation. If they advise us that there is something unsafe, and I'm inclined to, as a layperson, I was a professional engineer for 40 years, but I'm not a professional engineer now. If they advise us that there is safety to be considered because of the terrain, but when that car going 37 and a half miles an hour reaches the military crest of that hill and it starts down the other side, probably at 35 to 37 miles an hour, he's going to T-bone a car or find that little kid coming out of a driveway on a scooter, a bike, a trike, chasing a basketball, and there's going to be something serious going on. We must slow that traffic down. We must, in my opinion. But we're going to get a professional opinion as to what the visibility limitation is on that particular piece of real estate. Now, if that means going to a four-way stop down at Timber Run and Alabaster to make people stop to start up again to go over that hill, if we have to put a permanent speedometer readout up there, and with the flashing lights, when you go 31, you're 20% over the 25 mile an hour speed limit, which is easy to do. It's very easy to do. We are going to do everything that we possibly can. And I can tell you for a fact, we're going to restrict big trucks, three axles and above, of using that piece of real estate. And I'll give you equal time, Marie. But I don't want your cement trucks and your cement block trucks and your roofing trucks coming off of Herbert going through our city to a new building over in the township. They're going to come down Gibson and we're going to, they're going to be in my court, standing right there. I don't think that's unreasonable. I don't think you and I are going to argue over that. Councilman Cicero and I are going to come to one of your meetings and ask, request that your zoning people, when they issue a building permit over there, tell the contractor, don't come in off of Herbert Road. And don't go out that way either. We're going to try to restrict traffic in a logical way. Most important, we're going to try to slow down traffic in front of your house. At 25, I think the road is safe. Unfortunately, we're dealing with people. That's the weak link here. I hear people say that police presence seems to have a tremendous impact. I would love to see you folks here tomorrow at 4 o'clock when we talk about potential cuts that we're going to make. I would hope that you had voted for that half a percent to income tax thing. Could have hired more police. Anybody planning to come to our budget meeting tomorrow? We hear you. Come help us. Because we sit here trying to get the revenue to help you. For one minute, do not think that we do not appreciate the safety factor that is taking place on timber runners. As your neighbor, 
I want a brick wall across that road. As the mayor, I can't allow myself the luxury of thinking like that. But I do have to think, in, how are we going to enforce whatever we come up with and make it practical? I can tell you for a fact, I know the profile of the speeders. Watch when this hits the paper tomorrow. She's a female. She has a telephone growing out of her left ear. And she's got two kids standing in the back of her car. And she's going about 35 miles an hour. You might ask yourself, how do you know she's going 35 miles an hour? Councilman LaCicero and our conscience here, Frank and myself, we're engineers. Car traveling 60 miles an hour goes 88 feet per second. So 30 miles an hour, it's 44 feet per second. I personally have had training in how to estimate speed. And I'll tell you, they're going 35 miles an hour and better. And I think I've heard the neighbors say that, and I we heard an expert with the radar gun. The answer here lies in training our people, township people and city people. And I'm going to tell you one of the finest lessons I learned as an auxiliary policeman, David Blystone. David Blystone was our former chief. He was referred to as an academic cop because he taught down at Youngstown. He's a professor and our chief. I had a detail one day at the school, and I was asking a lady to not park on my crosswalk at the school. Big Denali. And she looked at me and she said, you expect my kid to walk, he's a fifth grader, to walk across this street in this cold weather? It happened to be the year I was standing out there for five days and I got pneumonia, but her fifth grader couldn't do that. Well, the third time that I asked her to move, I said, move this vehicle now. I was about ready to take out my baton and tap her hood violently. I chose not to do that. So when I came back to the police station, I said to Dave, Dave, yeah, I know you're going to get a call. And I told him the story. He says, I bet it's the lady that just called, bro. And I said, I was polite. And those were our instructions, and they continue to be our instructions. David Blystone told me the secret to being a police chief. He said, Byrne, we're trying to regulate a population that doesn't want to be regulated. So we can talk, and we can talk about physical barriers to slow these people down. And I've been using the term since I've been in the mayor's seat. We have to educate our people. We have to educate them. If we have the budget, we're going to strongly enforce whatever we create down there. If we don't have the budget, we're going to have to count on you throwing a brick at that car. Don't do that. Folks, we're going to make a decision. We're going to get a, a professional opinion. We're going to get a professional opinion from, a, from engineers. We're going to get a legal opinion if we can create a four-way stop. We're going to get a legal opinion as to can we put permanent speedometer readings up there. And if we gather that data, and that data will tell us an average speed going through there, if that speed comes up excessive, what is excessive? Let's say it averages 33 miles an hour. That means somebody's going 40 and somebody's going 27. We might revert back to that gate. And I know people don't want that. You want it. Very few other people want that gate. I don't want it there. I would rather that the population regulate itself. 